This is St Ethelbert's Gate, one of the two main gateways into the Cathedral Close, and it was built by the good citizens of Norwich as a penance for their unruly behaviour. The year is 1272, and within the close area, not only the cathedral, but also a monastery and various monastic buildings. But there was also growing disagreement between the religious men on this side of the fence and their lay neighbours on the outside. It was all over rights and duties and boundaries. So in 1272, the mob revolted and not only burnt down the gates, but also St Ethelbert's church. They even caused damage to the cathedral and the cloisters during three days of rioting. When the rioting had been quelled, King Henry III himself came up to Norwich and blamed the citizens. He levied huge fines for repairs and rebuilding. Even the Pope himself decreed that the entire city of Norwich was to be excommunicated, the only English city that's ever been excommunicated from the church. And the penance? Well, they had to build a new entrance into the monastery area, and hence we have St Ethelbert's Gate. From a gate to a wall, and this house, built 100 years later in 1370 and deemed to be the finest piece of flint work in England. The house was owned by Bartholomew Appleyard, whose son William became the first Lord Mayor of Norwich in 1403. And today it's home to the Museum of Norwich, and inside we can discover a large number of Norwich firsts. This is a copy of the earliest printed plan of any English city, created by a man called William Cunningham, who was a doctor of physics in the city at the time, and it's called Cunningham's Prospect of Norwich, dated 1558, and it is the basis for all succeeding city plans of Norwich for the next century. In the 1790s, the first recorded shoe manufacturing plant for stock shoes, as opposed to bespoke shoes, was established here in Norwich in St Peter's Street by James Smith. This developed into the Startright Shoe Company that many of us will remember well. And whilst on the theme of the shoe industry, in the middle of the 19th century, the largest shoe manufacturing plant in England was constructed for Howlett and White's in Colgate. At the beginning of the 19th century, local brewers Stewart and Patterson had a greater brewing output than any of the London brewers. This was a time when Norwich supported 27 breweries who were serving 505 city centre pubs. 505 pubs within the city boundary alone. <laughs> and now a quirky first to finish the wire netting machine developed right here in Norwich. Charles Barnard was an ironmonger with workshops in Pottergate for the manufacture of ironwork for domestic and agricultural implements. He was also the son of a farmer and knew there was a need for fencing to keep out rabbits and foxes. He decided to try and design a machine and he succeeded. By 1844, a primitive loom operated by his group of hardy employees was being used in his works. Amazingly, this machine was never patented, but it must rate Barnard high up there as one of the most innovative inventors of his time. Another Norwich first. <laughs>